Father Frank Pavone is certain that his dismissal from the clerical state is not the last punishment in store for him. Speaking on the Dr. Taylor Marshall program, where Marshall asked Pavone about the fact that the communication from Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the papal nuncio to the United States, regarding his dismissal said there was no possibility of appeal. The priest clarified that, in his opinion, this means that only the Pope, and not a court or dicastery, can alter the decision. He said he was confident that we can resolve the canonical situation and that he had it on good authority that some of the Pope's advisors are telling him, you know, this was a bad mistake. Part of what led to the laicization decision is Pavone's alleged persistent disobedience of lawful instructions of his diocesan bishop. The priest gave Marshall the context for how those charges came about. At one point, Pavone had been suspended by his bishop but appealed successfully, and was even told he could continue broadcasting on EWTN. Suddenly, however, Bishop Zurek forbade him from exercising any priestly ministry until a visitation from Rome was accomplished. Pavone believed that he was able to continue operating as the head of priests for life while this suspension was under appeal. He explained to Marshall that he went to Rome and asked the head of the congregation for clergy directly if Bishop Zurek had been authorized to suspend him. To the contrary, he was told that Zurek had been instructed to be generous in what he allowed Pavone to do. I acknowledge the need to be obedient to one's bishop, but I also object to the abuse of authority, the priest said. Pavone added that either his bishop had lied to him about what the congregation for clergy had told him, or he was not able to understand clear directives from Rome. As a result, Pavone found another bishop who would allow him to operate in his diocese, but Zurek wouldn't permit him to transfer. The priest told Marshall that all the relevant information for how he was mistreated by the hierarchy could be found at his website in a comprehensive document that will be continually updated. Also, many have spoken out in the treatment of Father Frank Pavone. Some of the statements made are as follows. Bishop Strickland of the Diocese of Tyler points this out by saying, The blasphemy is that this holy priest is cancelled while an evil president promotes the denial of truth and the murder of the unborn at every turn. Vatican officials promote immorality and denial of the deposit of faith, and priests promote gender confusion devasting lives. Evil. Father James Altman, a cancelled priest, also points the hypocrisy out with his words. Once again, the papacy demonstrates its utter and complete hypocrisy. Boy rapers got a free pass for half a century while cover-up bishops paid out eight billion dollars. Pro-abortion politicians remain in good standing despite half a century promoting the slaughter of innocents in the womb. Monsignor Grinder Burrell spends years whoring around with men but gets his parish back. The examples go on and on, but they lay aside the single best priest who fought against abortion. Bergoglio's papacy is accursed. Sister Deidre D.D. Dee Dee Byrne Dear Prayer Warriors What just happened? More confusion that's what has happened. And the devil is the author of confusion. Our world is more turbulent than ever. The most vocal pro-life priest has been laicized. What crime has he done to warrant such a harsh punishment? In the wake of this travesty, we still have the most pro-death, anti-nuclear family president in our nation's history who professes to be a Catholic in good standing with no real guidance from a majority of our bishops or the Vatican. Confusion is further exemplified by Catholic faithfuls, and our non-Christian brothers and sisters, the Uyghurs, persecuted in China by the CCP with again no support from our Catholic leadership. Cardinal Zen, who is also the most vocal cleric against the CCP-Vatican Accord, is found guilty of a charge relating to his role in a relief fund for Hong Kong's pro-democracy protests in 2019. There is no outcry from the Vatican. For Cardinals, Walter Cardinal Brandmuller, Carlo Cardinal Caffera, Joachim Cardinal Meisner, and Cardinal Burke, co-author a document. Seeking clarity, a plea to untie the knots in Amoris Letitia. Vatican doors are locked for them. 
A Jesuit priest is the greatest promoter of LGBT behavior, and the Vatican greets him with open arms. Another Society of Jesus, Jesuit, priest, Friar Marco Rupnik, is excommunicated in 2019 for sexually abusing religious sisters and then absolved them in confession. However, this same priest was permitted by the Holy See to create the logo for the 2022 World Meeting of Families and given permission to preach in 2020 a Lenten meditation for priests in the Roman Curia, including Pope Francis. Again, I do not know what Father Pavone did to warrant laicization, and now he is added to the growing list of cancelled priests. But what appears to many of us Catholics who love our Church is selective, mercy, from the Pope of Mercy. I ask myself often, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Luke 18 verses 7 to 8 Please pray for Father Pavone and all our dear priests who cancelled for speaking truth. Thanks for watching. God bless.